everyone, and welcome to the Yarn Journey Crochet Podcast. I am your host, Holly, and today I have my little co-host, Miss Katie. She is blind. Um, sorry if I'm a little out of breath. Um, I've been carrying her around, and she is not a light cat. She's heavy. Um, we got her from the shelter. Huh. There you go. Show your pretty face. Um, her and my daughter actually just bonded at the shelter. They basically picked each other. So, yeah, I'm going to put her down now because she is heavy. And this was at the request of my grandma. She wanted to see my cat. So, yeah. All right, I'm going to put her. Well, apparently my, my dog's going to be with me, too. Yes. Okay, so let's get into this. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Um, I am your host, Holly. I talk about crocheting, yarn, and occasionally I'll have some knitting. Um, I live in Virginia with my husband, my two kids, my dog, and my fat cat that you just saw. Um, I just wanted to say welcome to all the new subscribers. I know we've had a few. Um, also, I wanted to say thanks for returning to returning viewers. Um, so yeah, my grandma wanted me to show my cat because she hasn't seen her before because we got her while we were hire out here in Virginia. I have to tell you, I recorded this podcast yesterday and it was a hot ass mess. Sorry for the curse word, but it was. I was stammering and stuttering. And as you guys can tell, you saw my yarn creators video yesterday. I said England was a continent. It's a country. I am not that stupid. I promise. I promise I'm not. You know, I got accepted to every college that I applied to. <laughs> And these were like universities, not like little dinky colleges. Um, yeah, I'm not stupid. I just didn't go. <laughs> so, cheers. I'm on my second cup this morning. So hopefully I make sense. I am clear, <laughs> concise, and everything makes sense. Like I said, it is warm here today. It is gloomy. It's warm and muggy and gross because we're having storms the next couple days, but then it's going to like drop drastically from warm 60s to 30s. That's how it is in Virginia. And it is so weird. I thought California's weather was ridiculously bipolar. Oh no, 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 no. This, this weather is t ridiculous. At one point during the week, we went from having 20 degree weather and then it literally, in the two, three days later, we were in the 70s. We went from the 20s to the 70s. Now, this isn't Fahrenheit, not Celsius, or we'd be roasting alive out here. <laughs> um, so, yes, craziness. I'm totally getting off topic. But you know what? I would rather get off topic and make sense than just sit here and uh, <laughs> not make sense. Okay. Sorry. I'm warm, it's gloomy, it's rainy, it's hot, it's gross. I hate it. <laughs> Which is one reason I love Virginia's winters and falls and springs most of the time, but summer and these muggy days, ooh, not my favorite. Okay, let's get into it. I have no FOs. Um, wait, 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 wait. I did do the yarn creators video now. Yesterday, I went through a whole bunch of people's videos because I really haven't had the time to go and look through them. And of course, I found more. So with the yarn creators, I will be um, posting more down below only because I don't want to make a part two video. Because yesterday I tried to film three videos. And if you saw my intro video, that's probably going to get taken down and redone today too because... I think I got a little excited to get it done and then I stumbled on my words a lot and it didn't not quite make sense. So yes, um, no wit or no FOs this week, but I have been working on some stuff. So we'll move on to whips. I got new uh, editing software, so whips or whips. I don't know. <laughs> 
I'm sorry. I'm being super weird this morning, but you know what? It beats the ladder of the last video. Oh, it was terrible. Let me tell you. Okay. Whips. Summer romance shawl. Now this is the pattern that I have been writing. It has been sent out to testers. Um, if you wrote me on the video where I mentioned testers, or if you got in contact with me on Instagram or Ravelry, I did message you if I could. Now, I did have people ask me on YouTube and I was considering doing them and I actually tried sending the messages, but unfortunately it seems like with YouTube's message system, it's really weird. And you can only message someone if they make content or I haven't figured out a way to do it because it's on the about me page. And if you don't have an about me page, I can't message you. And if I don't know you through Instagram or Ravelry, unfortunately, I couldn't get a hold of you. So I was actually going to do a couple more than five, but it ended up being five because that's all I could get a hold of. So I'm hoping you guys can hear me better. Oh, my laptop is about to die and I don't have a plug in. There we go. Ta -da! Okay. Um, but it did go out to pattern testers. Hopefully we will have this pattern. I will have this pattern out in March for sale. Um, and here it is. I'm almost done with it. I am on the last repeat and then I'm doing the border. Um, so here it is. It's kind of ripply, but it needs a good blocking. If you can see some of the details. I love it. Okay. So this is the yarn that I'm using for this one, which you don't have to use. You can use any yarn you want. You could use one color. You could use two, three, four. So each repeat you change to a different color. Um, you can use any cake yarn on the pattern. It will say Karen cakes or cake yarn, but you can do what you want. Um, so yeah, that's this. I'm using Karen Cakes and it is in the colorway Fruit Cobbler. Now this colorway is discontinued. They don't sell it anymore. So if you find it, it's probably going to be in someone's stash. Whether or not they want to sell it is another thing. So yes, um, I used a seven millimeter hook, but my son decided he was going to take mine, run off with the only one I have, and I had to switch to an eight. So, yeah, there was that. So, that is the Summer Romance Shawl. And like I said, it's out to pattern testers, so hopefully we will have it in by March. And next, I don't have necessarily a name for this yet, but I kind of have it named after my daughter at the moment. So, this is the Emma Sweater. Now I still have to put the arms on it, but as you can see, this is also um, in kids sizes at the moment. I'm working up to kids sizes first, then women, and eventually men. Um, just because, well, babies too, because this pattern can really, it's super easy and, well, I think it's easy. <laughs> um, it's pretty easy, it's fairly repetitive, a lot of repeats. Um, now, some people might say this might be a boring pattern to make because of the repetitiveness, the repetitiveness of the stitches. Um, but also, I'm not supposed to have this on here. This is supposed to be like one of those end things that you do after you put the sleeves on and everything. But I got impatient and I did the ribbing because to me it just didn't look right without it on. So the Emma sweater. Let me stop moving it around so quick and you can see. So it has a squared off neckline just because I hate things like super close to my neck. And like I said, these will be in women's sizes, men's sizes, and I just like the way square necklines kind of look. I feel like it accentuates the decolletage area. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you have this nice cable that goes up the side as a feature. I was trying to get it all the way up here, 
but with the kids size, well, this size, this is a size six in kids. Um, it just wouldn't go up that high just because of the decreasing. It looks like it would, but it, it wouldn't. Um, unless I kind of shifted the stitches a little bit like this way. <laughs> um, so for the yarn, let's see, do I have it here? I do. So I had no idea whether or not this pattern was going to work, if it was going to be trashed. Um, I had no idea. So I decided to buy, there we go, Mainstays Yarn. So this is the Walmart brand yarn. They've recently come out with their own brand. Um, I decided to get this because it was literally $2 a ball. Yes, I could have gone with Red Heart or um, Karen Simply Soft. And it would have felt a little nicer. But like I said, I didn't know if this was going to get trashed. I didn't know if it was even going to make this far. So I went for the cheapest possible yarn I could get. And buy in a small sweater quantity for her, which ended up being like two balls. Um, so yes, I'm using this one. And it's in... Can you see that? Probably not. It's in medium gray heather. Which I don't know why they call it heather. Because it's not heathered at least from what I can tell. But then again, I'm, I'm pretty much as blind as a bat. Um, so yeah, I'm using medium gray Heather. And then for this stripy part, this little pop of color, I'm using red heart, super saver and parrot stripes, which as the sleeves go on, there's also going to be a stripe across each sleeve. Oh my goodness. Tongue twister today. So this one, I have no idea when it will be out because I have to work up a whole bunch of sizes to get the stitch count right. So <laughs> yes, this may be a while. Um, I'm going to work on kid sizes first only because they're smaller. They're work, they work up quicker. Oh my gosh. My brain, my brain, they work up quicker so I can get at least the kids patterns out first, work on the women's sizes because I do want to have up to pretty much every size. So I think it's like five X. Um, so as you may know, it's going to take quite a bit of yarn to do these. And I think if there is an, an easier way than making each single size, can someone let me know? Because I know that takes a forever. And with how some of these people crank out like garment patterns, it's crazy. But then again, they probably already have stitch counts um, for garments. So yeah, there's that whip. Um, next whip, let's see. I'm just throwing yarn everywhere. <laughs> is the giant Pinkie Pie. Now, when you last saw this, I just started the foot. Sorry, I'm like looking off into space to gather my thoughts. Um, the last time you guys saw this, I was just starting the foot on the second leg. Now, I ripped it out and started again. And this is how far I have gotten. Wow, that is blown out on my monitor that is looking like white. <laughs> that is pink. Okay. Yeah. That is baby pink by Red Heart Super Saver. Let's see. I have the ball band. Do, 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 do. Sorry if my nails look terrible. I was doing my makeup, which you can't tell luckily because of the lighting. Um, it was makeup catastrophe this morning. Makeup catastrophe. It was insane. Sorry, I'm whispering again. It just happens. <sighs> I'm hoping that this computer picks up the sound better than my other computer. We have two laptops. One is a family laptop, which was the one I was using because I was thinking it was going to have better camera quality. Um, but the sound wasn't very great. So this camera or 
laptop is my work laptop and this one tended to have a better voice. Now, I tried using the thing on this computer, the little microphone, and it was actually worse than just having the computer by itself. So, yes, Red Heart Super Saver and Baby Pink for Pinkie Pie. Um, which, <laughs> I'll explain why I'm not so very far on that. Well, you see, my daughter's awake. Um, I'm trying to film this before everybody woke up in the morning. Um, we had a late night because nobody wanted to sleep in the house. Drove, it drives me bananas. And that's been happening all week where my daughter just won't go to sleep. Emma won't sleep. And I'm just like, what the heck? And I was, I haven't been able to work on her Pinkie Pie all week. Her birthday's on the 9th of February. I have no idea how I'm going to get this done. I'm going to have to crochet like a mad woman. My fingers are going to fall off. My wrists are going to be dying. But I'm determined to get her that Pinkie Pie for her birthday. So. <coughs> oh, wrong pipe. Okay. I started... I started working on the fur top holiday stocking, which is actually behind me in my little cubby of works in progress. I started working on the fur top holiday stocking by Jesse Rayot again, because I've been going, I wanted to go through some of my whips and decide whether I was going to frog them or finish them because I don't know how many whips I have, to be honest. I mean, I'm not in the crazy number of like 30 or 40 or anything, but there's quite a few things where they're either practice swatches or I started something and I didn't finish. Um, so yeah, that happens a lot where I'll start a project thinking I'm going to do it and I freeform it and it doesn't get very far and it's over. So I started on this one. Oops, let's turn it this way so you can see the stitch marker. When you last thought I was right here. Now, if you notice, it's kind of wonky looking. Well, me being me, I didn't check my project page to see what size hook I was using. Duh, that's why you have project pages. <clears throat> well, I didn't check. And I started using a six millimeter hook and I was like, oh, I was probably using a six. I have tons of six millimeter hooks. That's what I was probably using. No, I was using a 5.5. So it's all wonky. And that is, it is purple, but it's looking a little bluey purple. And this is more of a, like a burgundy-ish purple so like a reddish purple I guess but yes this is a purple I'm using oh, loops and threads impeccable yarn in the amethyst colorway this is just red heart super saver soft white I still have to uh sew the heels together but I started this realizing it started getting wonky on my getting wonky on me and I just decided I'm done. I'm not gonna work on it anymore right now because I was getting frustrated. And it was like one of those bad days again where you start something thinking, okay, this will make me feel better. It's kind of mindless. I don't have to really think about it. Wrong. <laughs> so like I said, I was going through whips and frogging things. And I can almost bet you know what made the frog list. Um, it was the Honey Blossom Shawl by Ginty Lions, the one that I used for my cow, <laughs> which by the way, if you want to join the cow, it is still going. It is going until February 14th. Um, and I have four prizes to give away, two of which are yarn. The other two are patterns. One is a single pattern and the other one is a pattern book. But the single pattern was donated by Evan Gay's podcast um, by Jody Fieldhouse. That's her name. She has the Evan Gay's podcast or Evan Gay's Crochet. That's her channel name, Evan Gay's Crochet. But she has a podcast. 
there we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have four prizes to give away. And as it sits, I think we have seven finished objects at the moment. So very good chances of you getting a prize if you decide to join along and decide to do the disaster shawl. <laughs> okay, anyways, that made the frog list. I, but let me tell you. I started frogging it. First it was going good, ripping, ripping, break. I'm like, oh no. Okay, one break. So then I untangle it because it started to pill on itself. So there was a little pilling going on. So I had to undo that, start ripping. I didn't even get three inches before it broke again. Unpill it, start ripping. I maybe got four inches, break. I was like, okay, if it does it again, I'm done. I'm just tossing this thing. Unpill it. Not even three inches again. Broke. I'm like, I'm done. And I was so upset because I was like, I love that yarn. Well, it didn't let me back, apparently. It was like, you are done with this shawl. And we are leaving. <laughs> we are gone from this party. So I had to toss it. I wasn't going to fight with it. I am not going to stress over yarn in a bad project. Unfortunately, I wanted to reclaim that yarn and it didn't work out, but yes. And I hated it sitting there staring me in the face, basically telling me, I have conquered you. And I'm like, you didn't conquer me. I just don't have time for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'm trying to take the moral high ground with my freaking yarn. Oh my God. Okay. Anyways, I also frogged. Um, you guys haven't seen this on the podcast, so you're going to kind of be like, what? I don't even know what that is. I think at one point, Bella Coco did a um, mesh shawl. I did that with Bernat. No, 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 no. Not Bernat Pop. What is it called? Oh my gosh. Premier Sweet Rolls. Um, it was an all green colorway. I don't know if they still sell it, but I had a shawl in that and I started what well, looked like a scarf. Um, and I know that scarf was somewhere on Fiberflux, their YouTube channel. Um, she has tons of scarf, um, scarf and cowl tutorials and blankets. And I know I did one from there and it just, I didn't have enough yarn and I wasn't going to go buy more of this green because I really wasn't a fan of it, but I bought it anyways. I think my daughter liked it. So I ended up frogging that and I got basically two balls of Bernat Pop in green. Oh my gosh, Bernat. It's not Bernat. Premier Sweet Rolls because it's only three colors and Bernat or, oh my gosh. Premier Sweet Rolls are the only ball that has three colors of cake yarn. I believe Bernat is four. No, five. I don't know. But I know Karen Cakes is five. So. <sighs> My brain's not working. Anyways, yes, I frogged that and I got two balls of that and I was working on a I think I was like trying to do a baby blanket which has a couple holes in it because it's knitted so I'm gonna be ripping that out and I will probably sh excuse me show that next week um so now that we're done with the frog section because I think I'm gonna start adding that because I think it's good to frog things if you're not going to finish it, use that yarn. Frog it. It's not worth sitting in your stash doing nothing. If it's a yarn you really like, but you don't really want to rip out the progress, I feel like it's cleansing to frog. <laughs> okay, anyways, I've gone on enough about frogging. Hoarding. Hoarding. Okay. Now, I've got some stuff to show you. Let me tell you. Okay, let me get this out of the way because you are not in the hoarding section. You're in the chatter section. So this, boom. 
my husband wants gloves. Um, that is coming out super duper muted. Oh no. These are like super dark blues. There's even like a little, I would say black in there. And it's very tonal um, with this kind of creamy, not tan, creamy beige color in there. Um, this is Knit Picks Hawthorne Sock Yarn um, in the colorway The Pearl. He wanted this for gloves. He is not, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get comfortable because this chair can get so uncomfortable. He wanted gloves. He's not a mittens person for whatever reason. I don't know why, because it's actually, I feel like mittens are warmer than gloves, but yes, he's a glove person. So I have found a glove pattern that will work, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I've done that and I'm hopefully going to be making him gloves. But with the way this weather has been lately, it's not even cold enough for gloves anymore. It's been so warm. Okay, I can feel the pep of the second cup. Woo! <laughs> Next. Oh my goodness, guys. This yarn's gorgeous. And you really need to check her out. Sorry, I'm trying to get everything. You really need to check out this yarn company. Yarn Dyer, I should say, because it's not a company in the way of big companies. It's independently owned. It's an indie dyer. Um, I can feel a fiber tickling the back of my throat. Ugh. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is not going to show up. So. Okay. So this is like a really nice pink color with like a purple tone to it. And then there's this gray. It's like a nice mid-tone, not even mid-tone. It's kind of like a light gray um, with this beautiful cream. Okay. Now, it is by Arctic Crafts. This comes from all the way from Alaska. And Annalise Corner. Corner? Okay. That has to be corner. Kind of like C-O-N. Corner. Co corner. Corner? Corner? Cor you know what I mean? Anyways, she's on Etsy. And in terms of, oh, that comes with a little stitch marker, doesn't it? For knitting. Oh, look at that. Um, I didn't notice that. This is her Haunted Heart Iris base or colorway. It's 98 Merino, 2% nylon. It's a chunky weight yarn. It's a thick and thin. Um, she was having a sale Oh my gosh, it's squishy. It's so squishy. Like, you know when you could just look at a yarn and you're like, you're going to be squishy. That was this one. Anyways, she was having a sale. And in terms of affordability, in terms of indie dyers, not commercial, indie dyers, she is very affordable. I think on sale, I got this for $18. Um, and I think full price was... 20 or 22? I think it was 20. This was full price on 20. So I think it was like 10% off or 20% off or something. So yeah, very affordable. And it is, she has some beautiful yarn. Um, I will be buying more, just not right now because I don't have the money because I bought a few other things. Um, I got a, so that was, Arctic Crafts and Knit Picks. Um, I did have a separate Knit Picks order where I bought blocking mats. Blocking mats were $20 on sale for nine blocking mats. Yes. Yep. You heard me right. $20 for nine blocking mats. I have looked for blocking mats online and everywhere I have looked, they are like $4 a blocking mat. For one. $4. So basically, I could buy five individually for the price that I bought nine from Knit Picks. 
<coughs> and full price, I think they're 25. So even if you bought it at full price, you're still getting three more than you would get if you bought them full price somewhere else. Now, blocking mats, that's not very exciting to see, but this is Celtic Cable Crochet. There we go. Oh my gosh. I have been eyeballing this book for at least a good month, two months, basically since I've started the podcast. I have been eyeballing this. Ooh, it is coming down outside. It, today would be a good day to go dance in the rain because it's warm out while it's raining. Maybe me and Emma will do that. We'll go dance in the rain, make a mess. So Celtic Cable Crochet. Oh my gosh, guys. So the good thing about this book is this does go all the way up to 3X for the garments. Say what? Yes. You heard me. Ooh, they have more. Contemporary Celtic crochet. Hello. So they show some more books that you can purchase that are of similar um, designs, I guess. Vintage Modern Crochet. Hmm. Those are interesting. Okay. I wanted to get to this. I bought this on Knit Picks. They um, had, like I said, they were having a book sale of 40% off all their books. And this book, I believe, is normally $25 new. So here's one that I wanted to make. So I know I said this year I want to try and make three, four blankets. <laughs> it's all about the garments this year. I am totally going to be making myself sweaters. Because guess what's coming up? Tax return season. And guess what mama's going to be buying? Sweaters quantity worth of yarn. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Like that is so pretty. Oh, I love it. I'm totally making these. Um, so yeah, I really bought these for the sweaters, but they have beautiful cowls, ponchos, um, more sweaters, cardigans. This is another one. I, I literally bought this just for the sweaters and the sweaters and the cardigans. Um, like, look at that huge scarf. Gorgeous. Okay. Anyways, let's off topic. Oh my gosh. I completely forgot to show you a whip. Anyways, we'll go back to that. I bought this and I will cherish this book because I'm Irish. I mean, I'm nine different nationalities or ethnicities. Yes, ethnicities. That's the right word. And my mom was Dutch and Indonesian. And growing up, that was heavily brought into our lives with different foods and traditions. Um, but once she passed away when I was young, I really didn't get those traditions. And for whatever reason, the Irish ethnicity to me just kind of resonated with me a little more. Um, not that the others don't, it's just, I, it kind of stood out to me a little bit. So I love all things Celtic or, um, I know at one point my grandma thought we were Scottish, which turned out we weren't, but yes, I just love all things Celtic. I would love to go to Ireland one day. One day, I'd love to live there. Oh my gosh. It, from pictures, it looks absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Anyways, we'll go back to the whip that I missed because I missed it. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, on the floor. Look at that. So, as you know, I'm giving away this pattern book. Well, I have one and I'm giving one away. So in here, I've been wanting some mug rugs. So I decided they have this pattern in there and I think it is super duper cute. And I have never done the spike cluster. That's what they call it in here. I've never done that stitch. So I looked at it and I was like, okay, we'll give it a go. So I'm not finished. I actually just started this last night. So 
There we go. Boop, boop. So they want you to use cotton, but I went stash diving and I didn't have any cotton. So I used something that was closer to the colors than the actual thing, just because I'm not putting stuff on here that's going to be piping hot, that's going to mess up the yarn. So for the cream color, I'm using what was left of a ball of yarn that my grandma gave me, which is um, Lion Brand Woolies. And um, this is in the color Fisherman 99. So my grandma sent me quite a bit of her stash yarn. I see you. My grandma sent me some of her stash yarn that she was not using and felt I would get better use out of it. So I'm using up this. So why are you doing the podcast? Why am I doing the podcast? Yeah. Because I always do the podcast on Sunday. <laughs> so yes, this is stash grandma's stash that she sent me so yeah and for the brown I think it's sale 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 we'll just say sale um I'm not sure where to get this my grandma likes to shop Hirschner's so I think you may want to check there if you wanted to get this yarn this is like super blowing out like this is so this is the colorway is cinnamon, 0330 cinnamon. Um, but it kind of, it's, it's blowing out terribly because the lighting is horrible today. Um, I would check Hirschner's if you wanted to recreate what I'm recreating. But um, yeah, that would be my guess on where to get this. Um, so that was my last whip. <laughs> um, let's see. That is it for everything that I bought. So that's it for hoarding whips chatter. Oh goodness, guys. This week was an eventful week. Let me tell you. Okay. So first off, I finished this. I guys, I showed you guys this book during Christmas. In my podcast right after Christmas, I believe. Or no, I the one right before New Year's. I got this book. This is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Manis Calico. And Calico. Not Calico. Calico. Um, oh my goodness, guys. So the first, I would say... Six, seven chapters are very, not slow, but anytime you start reading a book, they have to set up scenery, characters, and this is a new series. So they don't tend to do it more, they don't tend to go over everything in every book if it's a series. So this is the very first book to the series, so they have to set up the characters, they have to set up the scenery, the time period, the plot and everything to get you kind of in that realm of thinking. So the first seven chapters, it took me like, because it was pretty much setting up everything, I think I read it in between naps and pretty much nap time, which my sons ended up being short for whatever reason when I would read it. But then <laughs> one night, which the night of the happening happened. And I will tell you about that, the happening. Um, I was reading this one night and my kids, thankfully that one night were sleeping. Um, and I literally went from chapter seven to chapter 22. I kid you not in like four hours. So I'll show you how much I read in one night because it was that good. Like it was insane from chapter seven i started on seven okay let's... and let me tell you guys this book the characters some of them are well developed others are a little less 
developed. So basically, I read this much of that book in one night. And then I read the rest of it the next day. This took a week. <laughs> um, so character development. I feel like she could have done more, but this is a young adult historical fiction book. So you can, I don't know. I feel like with young adult, the, you're not going to get the content that you want as an adult. Like they're still good to read. They're easy reads they're quick reads. Um, but character development could have been a little better, but I think she did a good job. If I was a teen, I would be captivated, which I was even as an adult. But, um, yeah. But I do love the characters, especially um, the love interest. I say that in quotes because the sexual content of this book is very PG and is understandably why it is young adult. Um the content necessarily of Jack the Ripper isn't because they go into some details that are kind of gruesome. Um, if you have not heard of Jack the Ripper, he was a very gruesome murderer, a real life murderer in um, Victorian London in the 1880s. So, but I will say where it does fall, fall a little short on character development the plot twist at the end of who Jack the Ripper is, just in the book, not in real life, that's where she, historical fiction comes in, mind blown, was not expecting it. I was, and the reason behind the starting of Jack the Ripper is another like, wow. And he, the reason behind it kind of makes your skin crawl. If you're a Tim Burton fan, you like this book. It's very um, dark and mysterious. But yes, the love interest in this book, Thomas Cresswell. I love him. Oh my gosh. He is, I think he's by far the best character, to be honest. He keeps it interesting. He's witty. He's charming. He's arrogant in the best way. Um, he knows his stuff doesn't stink. And he fully embraces that. And I love it. Um, so definitely check this out. It's $10. I believe it was $10 at Target. Super good. I will be buying the second one, which is Hunting Prince Dracula. And I am a fiend for all things vampire. A fiend. A fiend. Oh my gosh. So anyways, next up on the chatter list which I said the night of the happening. This is the happening. I was reading this book. I get up to get some water because I was thirsty. I was parched while reading my, my book. And I go into my kitchen and I don't have the light on. It's dark, but it's not so dark because my laundry room light was on. So there's still some light going in, but it wasn't like bright, right? Well, I walk in and what do I see on my floor? A mouse. There is a mouse on my kitchen floor. I'm like, Nick, Nick, get in here. There's a mouse. There's a mouse in the house. Dr. Seuss style, style, I swear. There's a mouse in the house. There's a mouse in the house. He didn't believe me. You're seeing things. It's dark. There's not a mouse. Are you sure it's a mouse? I don't think it's a mouse. How would a mouse get in the house? I'm like, I don't know how it got in the house, but it is in the house. Come look. He gets up, super skeptical, think I'm making this up. Nope. And I was like, it's behind the chest freezer in the corner. Go, go move the chest freezer. I guarantee you there's a mouse. What does he do? First off, super cautious, almost scared to move it because he doesn't want it to run out at him. <laughs> Moves it and sees the mouse run. Now, this mouse darts for the corner where 
our wall meets our cabinets. And there is a hole about a little bigger than a quarter. Mouse jumps right into the wall. Oh my gosh. So he's like, should I tape it up? I was like, no, don't tape it up. Please don't tape it up. I don't want it to die in the walls and start to smell. We have to sell this house later this year. And I don't want people walking through the house going, did something die in here? <laughs> and trust me, I know the smell of a dead rat because I had to help my dad clean out attics, the attic of our house, when the field behind us got sold and they started building homes and all the field rats had nowhere to go. So they ran to the houses that were already there and ended up in the attics. Almost everyone had issues with rats when they did that. And who's the one that had to help dad clean the attic with all the dead rats? Me. Not fun. It smelled. It was terrible. Ugh. So we don't know if it's a mouse or a rat. I thought it was a mouse because of how small it was, but the tail was extremely long, which makes me think rat. So baby rat, which means there is probably a family of rats somewhere. Ugh. So yeah. I don't know what to do. Um, I know I have to get some kind of trap, but I have to do it where my kids won't get it. And it is not like rat poison because God forbid the last thing we need is my son putting rat poison in his mouth because he's everywhere. He climbs on everything. He's a little monkey. I swear he climbs on everything. So everything has been bolted down and I've like even considered getting rid of my freaking coffee table because he climbs up on it and then falls off. He falls off repeatedly and he doesn't stop. So I'm like, yeah, I should just get rid of my furniture. So yeah, that is it for this week. Um, like I said, I will post the small yarn creators down below because I don't want to do a part two of this video and Honestly, at the moment, I don't remember because I subscribe to quite a few. I would say another six or seven at least. Um, like I said, I'm not doing the shout outs in the way of, hey, give me your name and I'll give you a shout out. That's not how I'm working it. Um, I'm working it as anybody who's under a thousand subscribers that I personally subscribe to, I will give shout outs to because it just doesn't sit well with me telling everybody to go subscribe to channels that I don't even watch. So I will let you guys all go. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.